Bob is ready. Direct from Hobart, it's time for you to hear those so-called experts from Survivor Oz talk about another reality show despite the fact they always said they would ever talk about Survivor. It's the Amazing Race Oz and here's your host, Noah Grove. Hello people and puffins and welcome to the Amazing Race Oz, Australia's only Amazing Race podcast that is a true fact. Um, I am Noah Groves and we are here to talk about episode 6 of the 26th season of the Amazing Race Oz, of the Amazing Race, not Amazing Race Oz. I am Noah Groves and I keep repeating myself. I'm going to get straight into it because I don't know where I'm going with this intro. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit left out here because I'm the only one from Australia, the only one playing snooker, um, the only one who's hanging out with Eskimos. So, um, speaking of people that no one gets, um, it's Rossi. Rossi, welcome back. <laughs> wow. Feeling the love already. <laughs> Uh, well, that's what you get for calling me and Ben not professional hosts. I, I, I forgive, but don't forget, Rossi. All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're listening to this, that was not edited out. Rossi literally said nothing. Um, and speaking of, well, that's a bit mean. I was about to say speaking of nothing. <laughs> uh, so speaking of Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, it is the teen mum's biggest fan, Snooker Kanar. Kristen, welcome back. I don't even know how to respond to that. Um, how's the dungeon going? Done some spring cleaning? Of what? <laughs> the snooker table. you got to clean it up uh, after you're done. Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let's talk about the episode. Um, episode 6, general thoughts on it. I thought, personally, it was the best episode of the season so far, and I thought it was a real improvement on the past five episodes and uh, this would have fitted quietly in last season it felt like a much stronger all-round one Crossy, what did you think no i actually thought it was a really good episode um even though like this was another episode with the not like challenge parts were the most interesting part with the um like race to the pit stop even though they didn't try to hide who was going after it was all settled. But, no, I really enjoyed it. I think the challenges were interesting. The interactions of the team were good, and we had our first blind date kiss, which I liked. Yeah, and Kristen, what did you think of the episode? Yeah, I thought it was good, too. Um, I'm upset that uh, Haley and Blair aren't fighting as much because <laughs> that's my favorite part of this entire season. They were way too nice this episode. Yeah, that's not cool. But I'm totally rooting for them to win and then like get married. But uh, <laughs> I basically, I don't know. I thought it was. I thought that it was going to be another it's trashy like, reality show that you watch, Kristen Blair and Haley yes? the wedding. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the live tweets coming in. That could we'll be a, a a doctor. Um, Doctor TV show, uh, reality show with Blair and Haley running their own uh, general practice or something. I'd watch that. Not. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> did you have anything else to add, Christian? No, that's fine. Uh, all right, let's jump into the episode. Uh, straight before even in the episode on the previously on, we had the Ford Focus where they were trying out their new Ford Focuses, which. It wasn't even previously on, so it feels lying to us, but um, straight into the episode, and we had to proceed to Monaco, um, which I believe is the first time The Amazing Race has been there. I'm probably wrong, but first I had to land in Nice, or Nice, that was, sorry, um, and I wrote some airport scenes. I was happy about that. Anytime there's airport scenes, I get giddy. I love the airport scenes. Kristen, do you like airport scenes, or you don't give a fuck? Uh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> uh, Rossi airport scenes, or am I just a loser here? Um, I don't know if I love airport scenes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if I get the most <laughs> entertainment from watching the airport I could watch a 40-minute episode of The Amazing Race in the airport. I love the airport scenes. But, I mean, I do like what, like, the drama of, like, finding tickets, like, 
how Matt and Ashley got there early, but still got, got the worst tickets, and Mike and Rochelle got there last, but got the best tickets, and I like that kind of drama. Yeah, that was so um, early season, the getting better tickets and that, and I was so happy for Mike and Rochelle because I loved them and hoped they would take the lead, but... Yeah, love the airport scene. Um, and once I landed in Nice, they uh, or Monaco, they had to head to Hotel Westminster and get fitted. Um, I think Colin said this was a bit cheesy. Uh, I'd say it was cheesy, but this was one of my favourite parts of the episode. I love the fact that through the entire race they had to wear their suits and, like, Mike running down the path, half his suit drenched and, like, all these dresses and that. Uh, Rossi, did you like the whole... Dressing up for the leg, or was that too much? Um, dressing up, but it was so weird. We had such... It was, like, weirdly edited with, like, all this, like, sitting around having champagne <laughs> conversation. I just thought that was so weird. Anytime they can get alcohol into a blind date season, they're going to get alcohol in. Um, but, yeah, I was kind of... That's a good point, because I was kind of upset there, because, like... Mike and Rochelle were gaining momentum in that, and, and you have to wait till the next day to do anything. But, um, Kristen, I know you love to dress up. Uh, yeah, totally. Um, I didn't really like all the downtime that they had. It was kind of, uh, I guess that was probably necessary for whatever they had planned. But um, I think that there was actually, like, a reason they had to dress like that. Like, I'm pretty sure that, like, almost everywhere indoor in Monaco has, like, dress code and stuff so like they had to be dressed like that uh can we take your word on this one chris <laughs> uh you can feel Google it while i'm sitting here but i feel like that's a thing um oh, I, I, could, I could i could be making that up entirely but I, i'm pretty sure that's actually a thing so. i can't remember were you right or wrong about traffic wardens in the philippines acting like michael jackson i can't remember if that was a plus one to you or not <laughs> Uh, I don't even remember talking about that. <laughs> the thousand-year-old egg. It takes two weeks to prepare. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I could see that. Um, everyone did look pretty fancy around there, so that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, as we mentioned, there was the downtime. We had to just wait around. Blah, blah, blah. And we left in the morning, still in our costumes. Uh, well, now dressed in our costumes. And each person took a helicopter, which was pretty cool, and I'm glad they took it in order they got there, so it wasn't just everyone starting again. That was good. And um, we had our first roadblock of the episode, and only roadblock of the episode, Roses and Chocolates, creative uh, title, I liked that, uh, which was performed by Steve, Mike, Jenny, Laura, Haley, Jackie, and Matt. Um, Rossi, what did you think of Roses and Chocolates? Did you like this one? Um, on boring, just run on one place on the other and go back. The drama, um, Mike not being able. To, there was a lot of work and the decision of to select. <laughs> added a bit of, um, Kristen. Um, what are we talking about? I was googling Monaco. Sorry. <laughs> Roses and chocolates. Um, it wasn't, like, super intense or anything, but I thought it was decent. It kind of made everyone run around and look like idiots, like, getting all sweaty and shit. But I was glad that they let all the women wear, like, flats, even though they were, like, dressed. Oh, that would have been cruel if they didn't. Because that would have been so horrible. But <laughs> I I did think it was amusing when, I forget who it was, but it was so funny and you were like, yeah, we're just sitting back and relaxing. Our women are getting us stuff. And I was like, this is <laughs> odd. I but love the people on the yacht. That was my favorite bits, all the, yeah. all the people who didn't have to do the roadblock. Yeah, I thought I thought it was actually, like, amusing TV, even if it wasn't, like, great racing, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, as Rossi said, the drama is which chocolate will they pick? Uh, <laughs> cut the commercial. <laughs> I don't think there's too much to add on roses and chocolates. Is there? Um, I still thought it was entertaining, as Christian said, even if it wasn't challenging or anything. Like, it had its moments. Um, and then after that, we got our clue. It said to make way to the casino Monte Carlo, and we had Phil looking pretty dapper in a suit there. Um, Love to see Phil dressed up. That was pretty good. I love Blind Detour. Like, I still think they should be doing more Blind Detours. That was great. I love gambling detour. That was awesome. Like, 
um, it was pretty simple, but it just surprises me that they haven't done more of this kind of switching up detour kind of ways because this season has worked so well, but I thought that was so fun and they should bring that back. Even if they're not at a hotel, uh, the casino, they could just do it. You pick up this MOP, you get this one or blah, blah, blah. But anything else to add on the roulette uh, detour switching? Yeah. Uh, Rossi, what did you think of roulette uh, detour? Did you love that? No, I like that. Um, the only concern I have is the fact that, like, usually, like, the whole point of the detour is to pick which one you think you're better at. So I don't know if they should do this long term just because that's honestly, like, luck in which detour you get because you could get really good and have a better one. But is that not the same as the blind detour? Yeah, but was it ever expressed that you could switch? What the hell was that? <laughs> I think Phil's in the background trying to defend uh, <laughs> the roulette detour. <laughs> Phil's on the scene. <laughs> no, Rossi, you're all right. <laughs> I think Rossi's getting told off. Get the class. Um, Kristen, uh, I bet you loved the roulette detour, did you not? Um, I don't think it's something they should do, like, all the time, because, like, Rossi said, it's supposed to be, like, a choice, and it kind of, like, that's always a big part of it, is them trying to decide which one makes more sense, and sometimes picking a stupid option or whatever, but I did like it, having it once, so, like, once or twice a season, maybe, it would make sense. I feel like, even though I did like the detours, and I thought they were pretty even in the end, I kind of feel like they should have utilized the casino more, like... Well, I think it was Imagine Race Canada 2, or maybe 1, they they had to do a casino challenge, and I thought it would be fun if they incorporated the casino more, but it was still pretty good. Um, and then they had to go to the valet and pick up their Ford Fiestas. Um, we had already had Ford Focus, and now Ford Fiesta again. Uh, you'd think that Ford was sponsoring this show. Um and that take them to their detour that they chose, uh, well, they didn't choose, whatever landed on them. Uh, Kristen, did you like the valet bit, and do you wish we saw more casino or get onto the high wires? Um, I don't really care, like, whoever they had a task or challenge or whatever in the casino, like, cool, but I wasn't really, I didn't even think about it while I was on. And the ballet thing was kind of dumb, but they seem to be playing up the locations a little bit. Like, if here they actually had to be dressed up, they didn't have to be dressed up when they were in Germany, but they still made them look like idiots there. So, like, I guess that they're trying to, like, play into the locations, so they, like, made them get, a va- get the ballet, like, they like everyone that's there probably did so i think they're just trying to like play up to the locations did you like it monaco as a location Kristen, or it's just the same old same old i liked monaco because it reminded me of gossip girl because <laughs> blair not 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 blair not blair from amazing race but blair waldorf met prince louis in monaco so that's <sighs> obviously really important <laughs> um all right <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I can't have a big debate with you on Gossip Girl, sorry, Kristen, but I'll, again, I'll take your word for it. Um, I'm sure they dressed up in Gossip Girl too when they were in Monaco. <laughs> uh, Rossi, I have no idea if you're here, but did you like Monaco as a location? Um, yeah, yeah, I didn't really think... To, uh, shut up, no. <laughs> Talk. Um, wow. XO, I liked XO it. Gossip Girl. <laughs> gossip Rossi. <laughs> Go on, Rossi. I like the location, but maybe not so much. More so like the fact they were dressed up and went to all these fancy places. All right, um, we've talk- we kind of touched on these detours, and we had some good moments getting there in the cars, but uh, the two detours that they could not pick, they had to have whatever they got, was Win by a Nose, Lee and Steve, Mike and Rochelle, Blair and Haley, and Magdalena and Hayes, and 
Don't Slack Off, which was Jenny and Jelani, <laughs> Jeff and Jackie, and Matt and Ashley. Uh, Rossi, what did you think of the two D tours and blah, blah, blah? Would, which one would you do? What was it more interesting? All that jazz. Talk about the detours. Well, I wouldn't get a choice, Noah, because I'd have to do the random roulette. That's a good so, point. I don't know. so you can do Don't I Slack can't... Off. Um, I just like the, the easier one. Like, the challenging one was farther away from the pit stop, and then the harder one was closer. I thought that was a nice touch. Um, for sure, Mike and Rochelle were going home, and we'll jump into the ending a bit after this, but that was a good touch. But I, I have to test to that. I don't think that would be the easier one. <laughs> uh, but there's no skill involved. Person. Yeah, but I feel like I'm better at making grass juice than uh, climbing across the hills of <laughs> Monaco. But, uh, do you have anything else to add on that, Ross? Um, it was a weird challenge, but they were pretty good. Um, and I have no idea what the hell caramel is. Um, thanks, Americans, and I'm not sure if Canadians pronounce it caramel, but it has an A in it. It's caramel, and... People say it different here. Like, it's either way. Some well, people say caramel. Say? Some people say... I say caramel. 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 Caramel Eskimo. Caramel Eskimo. Caramel Eskimo is <laughs> playing snooker in a dungeon. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what that... I guess that was a tongue twister, but it wasn't really a tongue twister. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, Kristen? Which one would you do and talk about the two detours? Um, did you enjoy it and whether or not it fitted with the gambling theme or not? Um, I would probably do the heights thing just because it's easier and you don't have to mess up with you. Um, I, like, I think that, like, the you, you couldn't, uh, you obviously couldn't, like, exactly how many things were taking, but it seemed relatively fair to me because. Um, I think I don't tell me who they or don't ask me who they were, but I think that the first two teams that got different, um, like one that went to one place and one went to the other, they got there like in first and second. So it seemed like the distance was similar from and the who were those teams? I just said I don't know. <laughs> well, that was that was the joke. Um, sorry, I know. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> That seemed pretty even, um, and then I was getting kind of annoyed during the episode because I was like, clearly all the teams do doing the perfume were going to have an issue, but then I think that when they were driving, like we got from um, Jenny and Delaney, it looked like they were kind of like a town away, so it seems like the zip lining thing was like quite a bit further away from yeah, the so that stop than the other oh, one. This isn't in Monaco. This is way far. I don't know. Yeah, so I, th I think it kind of all evened out. Like, I guess maybe it didn't because even the people that had the easier uh, task, had, like, they all got there after. Yeah, well, but... that's what I was going to bring up. I don't think in the end it was that even because everyone's zip line or whatever you call it, sky, I don't know what that thing was, but Everyone from that got their laughs. So in the end, it turned out it wasn't even. I think that's. I think the challenge itself was easier. It was just the driving, which I, I don't. I don't know. I guess that doesn't really even it out. But I did like both of them. I thought the uh, even though something as stupid as the like putting perfume together, like I thought it was decent, and I didn't appreciate. Um, I don't even know what the hell their name is. There's one team that I don't know their names, but the chick that looks like. And when they were like, Mike and Rochelle, they're the weakest team here. I didn't appreciate that. I think that was Ashley, Laura, and Tyler. Um, one of those are they the ones that look like Ashley Benson and DeMail? Blonde? Uh, I don't know Ashley Benson. Is that one of the teen mums? No, she's, she's from... Per <laughs> she's, she's, she's an actress. <laughs> Ashley, uh, Miss Benson, the teen mom. Uh, yeah, it, it's probably Laura and Tyler, unless it's Ali and yeah, Steve. Uh, no, the two I boring know that. teams. Uh, yeah, so uh, Ali and Steve, um, uh, we'll, we'll jump into it at the end. But uh, So we had all the dr driving drama, which I very much enjoyed, and 
Um, maybe it wasn't too uneven because Jeff and Jackie kind of sucked at the directions. Um, but I, I, I adored this scene at the end with the whole um, split screens and who get it. I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. We know the order's going to be Jenny and Jelani first or one of those teams first. And Mike and Rochelle were losing. And pleasant surprise, Blair and Haley came out first. So, uh, Ross, did you love this whole uh, end driving drama kind of scene as much as I did? Kind of a refresher after uh, Bert and uh, the new kids just completely <laughs> failing. Yeah, no, it was good. It was um, reminding me of that like metal place they were trying to find a few episodes ago. And a lot of the drama. Um, and it was pretty, like, shocking to see a lot of the team, like, Jeff and Jack, tell this Sochi. So, I liked that it. it was good drama. Sochi, is that one of the contestants on the seat? Oh, wait, that was Survivor. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> moving on! <laughs> wow, um... Well, I wrote down, I'm not sure if anyone else noticed, I, I wrote down, I like the tester woman. Um, in Win by Nose, I thought she was quite funny, the lady there, and she, what's a bellow, and ooh, doesn't smell very good. I liked her, but maybe that's just me again. It really rounded out an already good episode and put a good finish on it. But when do you reckon the last time we had a genuine race, would it be... I don't know, A.B. and Maya in the Philippines, even though they got to stay in that ridiculous twist, or uh, I can't remember who went before them. Um, yeah, I'm going to say, who went before A.B. and Maya fourth, even though they didn't go then? Was it Tim and TJ, or the cyclist? Um, I think it was the cyclist. Well, the cyclist, that wasn't a race. They had a dreadful finish. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to say Philippines last season, like episode 10 or 11, was the last time we had a genuine race to the end. So that was very good. Kristen, did you like it? Yeah, I kind of like when there's, like, non-built-in drama, like when there's... Like this. airport scenes. Hey, you know. <laughs> Feelings mutual. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't even remember. I don't I'm even losing remember everyone this day. episode. <laughs> and Polo will be hosting like, next week on the Facebook like Did you look Kristen, at the I picture? ran home for this. Did you look at the picture? Yes, I looked at your picture. <laughs> Doesn't she look like that girl on the show? Um, I can't think of which contestant she looks like, but... Laura. Is her name Laura? Why does she have a sword? She has two <laughs> swords with her. What's she doing? What are you talking about? This the girl this from... is a really bad podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you were the one who brought up the picture. She looks like Kill Bill. <laughs> yeah, Ashley the Teen She's Mom. Not... She's not from Teen Mom. <laughs> <laughs> There's no... <laughs> There are no swords involved. Jeez, I, I would watch Team Mum if I knew they were sword fighting. You know? I, what are you talking about? The title about? is very misrepresentative of the show. I didn't know there was sword <laughs> fighting. I've been waiting about? for a show with sword fighting. Um, Where are the swords? <laughs> eat your you heart out, about? Game of Thrones. <laughs> I'm watching Teen Mum on Sunday night. <laughs> She's holding a damn sword, Kristen. <laughs> Not in the picture I sent. Uh, yes, in the picture you said. Uh, maybe we'll post that picture on the web. Hashtag Wolf. What are you talking about? She has a sword! No, she doesn't! She's holding a freaking sword. Not in the picture I'm looking at. Well, you said two pictures. I only sent one. Moving on. <laughs> I forgot I to mention. I only sent one. Uh, it was one of the best film on the scenes this week. I didn't mention it. Um, we've... Mike and Rochelle, where he goes, you look nice, Phil. And he goes, Mike and Rochelle are in the lead. Uh, one of the better Phil on the scenes. Maybe the best since, oh, hi, Mr. Phil, from the first ever Phil on the scene. But, um, yes, we had the pit stop at Plage de Passable. Um, don't ask me for pronunciation on that. In order, we'll go through a few of these teams. Um, obviously, the order, again, was completely 
different to what I and most people thought it would be. But um, first was Haley and Blair, which was a nice surprise, and we had Phil pushing it again. Um, oh, do you think these people are in love? And Phil stopped. Just because they're dressed up with chocolates, he's not going to fix that. And they won a trip to South Africa. Now, second, of course, we have Ali and Steve. And third, we had Mike and Rochelle. Let's talk about those three teams. Um, two teams and one boring team, if I say so myself, Rossi. Rossi. Um, there you cut what, what are you talking about? I wasn't making attention. I was looking up the oh, sword word. lady. <laughs> the team um, sword lady. <laughs> Christian, what about those three teams? To be honest, I think, um, sorry to cut in, there's only two teams that I'm happy with going, and it would be Ali and Steve and Jimmy Milani, who we'll talk about that. And the other team, I'm kind of liking at this point. Sorry, Christian. What three teams are we talking about? Ali and Steve, Aaron Lee, and Mike and L. Oh. I think somebody mentioned already that they thought that it was going to be Blair and Haley or Mike and Rochelle, and I was already, like, hoping for a not elimination leg just because I was not happy with either of them going. But um, uh, I love Blair and Haley. I think that they need to win just to come full circle in this ridiculous season. Um, Allie and Steve still have done nothing. And... Uh, Mike and Rochelle, I feel like they have, like, potential that a lot of people aren't giving them credit for. Like, they obviously are the racers, but they have, like, there's intelligence there. Like, they've shown in a few different situations that they can do well. So, I don't think that they're, like, necessarily going to be the next team out or two teams out from now. And, Rossi, those three teams, if you've paid attention this time around. I have. Um, yeah, yeah, stop playing with your so sword, sh- Rossi. No, sh- let me fucking talk. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, yeah, uh, Team Sochi, they're boring. Um, uh, Haley and Blair need to win. And Marshall, I like them, but I don't know, they're kind of. And maybe. Maybe possibly going up, but I, I don't know. I'm just not really loving them. Uh, the next three teams, uh, fourth was Matt and Ashley. Fifth came Jelani and Jenny, who I thought would be first. And sixth would be Magdalena and Hayes, who won the date night. Uh, so, Kristen, those three teams, if you can remember who they are. <laughs> Um, Matt and Ashley were, like, I still like them, but they, yeah, they, this was a quiet night for them, so, I don't really remember anything that happened, but, uh, um, who else? Oh, I think I'm biased towards Johnny and Jenny, because they were my one. Also picked Bergen, and Jeff, I'm sorry. And I... Me? Uh, Kristen. Kristen, she... Faded out, but she's back. <laughs> Sorry, keep going, Kristen. We lost you half. I don't know where I was. Uh, Jenny and Jelani, your winner's pick, and then I made a snappy comment that you also put Bergen and Kurt in the final, so we shouldn't take that too hard. And keep going. Um, I think I just said that I don't like Lauren Tyler because I don't really have... <laughs> And also those three teams, if you're paying attention. <laughs> you really didn't need to ask me what I said. You didn't miss much. <laughs> Ross, um, Jelani and Jenny are really annoying. I don't, I'm not liking them. They're just, they had a pretty good episode this week, but uh, um, I'm really liking uh, Ashley Benson and Tyler. Um, I'm excited for their second baby. Oh. Hashtag T. Yeah. Um, I'm really, and I like their alternate personalities of Magdalena and Hayes. That was funny. <laughs> I hope they continue that next week in Africa. Um, all right. Final team of the night. I was quite disappointed to see this team go because I thought they were one of the few entertaining ones and really one of the, well, not one of, the only ones conforming to this whole blind date thing. Uh, Jeff and Jackie, Team JJ, like, uh, I thought they were 
very entertaining. And Jackie was probably one of my favourites of this season. She was really, she always had funny moments. So I was disappointed to see Jeff and Jackie go. I would much rather some of the other ones go. And I was kind of hoping for a non-elimination, although I wasn't completely devastated. But I think it's a bit of a loss for the season, and we're only halfway through. I kind of looked on Twitter. I don't know if they're together, um, but I was trying to do a bit of snooping, but I kind of got a bit bored, so who knows. <laughs> Kristen, Jeff and Jackie, were you upset to see them go? I think I'm, like, the only person that, that, like, didn't like them at all. Like, I didn't, I guess I didn't not like them, but I also didn't care. So they were, like, on uh, Alley and for me they were the two teams that I didn't care which one left. Oh, there you go. Um, so for some reason, I thought you were a fan of them. Maybe not. Rossi, do you like Jeff and Jackie, or did you like Jeff and Jackie? Sad to see them go. Yeah, I'm devastated. I was. I loved them. They were the whole reason the season was worth it. Now they're gone, and we're left with boring winter Olympians that don't do anything. <sighs> A big loss, and a big devastating loss in my uh, preseason prediction. Uh, yeah, we'll get to the predictions. Trust me. Um, which I'm glad you said that because I kind of forgot. Um, <laughs> So that's been Jackie. Have we got anything to add on them? Last words, they're gone forever. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to know if they were together, and I hate to say that I don't know. <laughs> she only said she was going to give him her phone number, which didn't sound promising. Um. Yeah, she said, I'll give him my number. I think Phil's got a new number for his phone. Um, well, you talked about any uh, thing from my snooping. I didn't find anything on Twitter, but I may as well read out the Amazing Race Wikia page now while we're talking about it. Um, Jeff, 26. Jackie, 27. Uh, Jeff's from Florida, and Jackie's from Las Vegas. So I don't think it's going to work anyway. Uh, she's a professional dancer. Hashtag Team JJ. Trivia, along with Bergen and Kurt... Uh, they, yeah, I don't know that they're, <laughs> that they're not pre-existing relationship because that is the entire... Here we go, Kristen. This is one for you. Jackie used to be a dancer for the Miami Heat NBA basketball team. Uh, did you see her at the basketball I camp? I was that along? Yeah. Basketball I camp. Heard... <laughs> What does that have to do with the NBA or whatever you just said? It's basketball. <laughs> I've never watched NBA. Was Jackie there at basketball camp dancing along while you bounced some balls? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> Hashtag March Madness. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag I don't even like basketball, but I know that NBA is that basketball instead of Kristen who went to freaking basketball camp uh, maybe a bit too long for Twitter that hashtag <laughs> pit stop greeter kind of boring um, yeah I, I, I can't recall the pit stop greeter it was probably winner of Amazing Race Monaco season 4 um, uh, let's get a hashtag for the team and please give me a better one the team JJ, considering that is already a team, another team, Jenny and Jelani, so that was the most stupid hashtag of all. So we need a better team name hashtag for Jenny and Jelani. Rossi? Uh, hashtag team that makes the twist worth it. And Kristen... Uh, Kristen, give me a hashtag. Nah. <laughs> Is that it? Hashtag nah. When you were at bas when you were at basketball and they tried to make basketball camp and they tried to make you play, did you just say I don't like playing these games? No, I don't like hashtag games. Hashtag I don't like hashtag games. Hashtag basketball camp. All right, let's get to predictions. Um, Jackie. Jeffrey for Colin. He said that they would be the second ones out. So Colin is definitely not getting the point. 
Sarah and Hay uh, no, sorry, Jeff and Lida would be six, so you're out there. And you also thought uh, CJ and Libby would be seven, so not a good week for you, Colin. <laughs> Kristen, she said that Jeff and Jackie would be ninth, and that Blair and Haley would be seventh. So you were close, Kristen, but no. Rossi, you said they're going to be the winners, so you were definitely wrong. And you said Libby and CJ would be seven, but I wish. Um, Alex Morella said that Ian Jelani would be seventh, and he put Jeff and Jackie uh, as second. Uh, I put Jeff and Jackie as fifth, so I'm the closest. And I'm very devastated that he couldn't make it this week, because this is a big, big, big moment and probably something that will put us off the air, um, because this is going to cause a rift in the universe or something, because Jared Luby gets the point, as he also put Jeff and Jackie at fifth, which um, myself and Jared both get a point. So he can't even get a point on his own, as to be leeching off someone else. But yes, that's right, Jared has the point. Everyone's on the board now. So, how do I know? How do I know? Um... Well, you said that they would be what? Mine. Because, oh, yes, yeah, you're right. I guess technically, if we're working backwards, it probably is a tie. So you join us too. <laughs> I didn't have any points before this. <laughs> uh, so there we go. Everyone's on the board, at least in some capacity. Um, I believe Kristen and Colin are now leading, but I'll have to get the update. I haven't stats. had any points. What do you... You just that was point. my first point. Ugh. That was my... What are you talking about? <laughs> XOXO Gossip Rossi. <laughs> Kristen's number one is, if you let me scroll up, I can tell you it is Jenny and Jelani. So, so she has a chance of getting the final point. I mean, I'm going to say a new rule. You get ten points if you get the winner. Uh, Rossi says Jack and Jeffrey, so he's wrong. Uh, Jared says Jenny and Jelani. You know, it could happen. Uh, Alex says Andy and Steve. That could happen. He says Tyler and Lee. I can't remember who I said. I don't have it with me at the moment. But I think I said Jenny and Jelani as well. But I'll double check that for next week. All right, that is it for this week. <laughs> Bit of a wild episode on the Amazing Race Odds this week. We've had our highest highs and our very deepest, deepest lows. <laughs> but uh, I've had fun all the same. Next week, we're going to Namibia in Africa. Still no Hobart, waiting out for Hobart. I want that hour and a half back of my life where I talked on the Amazing Race Oz about Hobart for all that freaking time. So I don't know when that's happening, but still a half hour. Isn't, isn't this a repeat location from the Amazing Race Australia? Namibia, I believe they did go there, yeah. Yes, it is a double episode, so they might just head down to Hobart for a cup of tea and then head back to Africa. But um, double episode, so we'll be talking about more Amazing Race. Um, March Madness, I guess, is the reason why. And they're just trying to either that or they're trying to get this season off the air as quick as possible. Um, but to our episode, I'm going to hedge a bet um, that it's going to be one of those to-be-continued ones um, where it's kind of a non-elimination, but not really. And... Or at least one of them will be an elimination episode. Like, I feel like... But I think that only one person is going home. All right, make sure you tune in next week where we'll, we'll be talking about double episode of The Amazing Race Oz. Make sure you subscribe on the Survivor Oz feed. Please leave us a comment. We've got no comments uh, this season. We haven't been begging like we did. Oh. Catherine's sending us 10 comments on the website but please do it I uh, read every single one every single one of them and when I mean every single one of them I, I mean I read every single one of them because there's only been one so please 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 send us a comment because we would love it um, 
that's what Rossi needs to cheer his grumpiness up. And, uh, yeah, we'll be here next week to talk about more, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm not sure when this is going up, but uh, Survivor Oz, Oz Top T, I'll stay live. And, uh, it may have already happened by the time you're listening, but tune into that as well. And other than that, we will see you next week on the planes.